Hello, this is a Vox Commando tutorial to show you how to use the USB UIRT device to quickly learn infrared codes. We recently did a demo, so this is the uh, tutorial that I promised you. First thing you will need is the latest version of Vox Commando or later. So you need version 1.150. And I have sort of cleared this out so that we just have the basic listen and don't listen commands. And I have no plugins installed, so you will want to, as I'm doing now, make sure that you have your USB UIRT plugged in and the drivers installed, or this demo won't work. And you'll want to enable this USB UIRT plugin in Vox Commando. Save and then do a full restart. And then you will see the USB UIRT in your plugins drop down and in your plugins tab. And when we look at the plugin settings page, we will see uh, if your USB is not plugged in and it's unable to connect for some reason, this will all be gray. Here we have some basic settings. This refers to the speed at which events are generated because the USB UIRT can both generate events and learn and then rebroadcast infrared codes. It's two separate functions. So uh, for example, if I press buttons in normal mode, you'll see that events are generated up, right, down, left. And uh, you'll notice this event name is uuirt.ir and then WH stands for Westinghouse because I've created a list of nice event names for the codes on my Westinghouse remote. If you use buttons that have not been mapped to friendly event names, you'll see that they look like this. This is from my DVD player. So I'll, in another tutorial or in the wiki, I'll explain how you can create your own map files. But for this demonstration, I want to talk about learning infrared codes using voice commands, uh, as I did in the previous demonstration. I will mention that in terms of events, the repeat interval refers to how quickly these events will be generated. So if you want to generate them very close together for repeated events like for a volume event change that to 50 milliseconds you'll see that they fly by i like half a second to avoid the possibility of the button firing twice when i actually only want it to fire once so now we can learn codes manually in this window and i'll show you when i click learn and then press uh, stop button, you normally hold the button down until it uh, goes up to 100%. Happens very quickly, but if you watch, you'll see here it says learning and it goes 24. If I just tap it, you'll see it, it works its way up to 100% as you hold it down. And then when it's confident that it's learned the same code a few times, It'll show it here, and it'll also generate this learn complete event. This is what we're using to store values in our map table. Along with this video, you will want to have this XML file, which I'll be posting on the forum along with a link to this video. And you'll want to import this into your command tree. So assuming that you have the device and the driver installed and you've enabled the plugin, once you've dragged these into your tree, you should be able to start right away. Save. I want to learn buttons for my DVD. Ready to learn buttons for your DVD. Learn button, enter. Ready, press enter. Center button saved. Learn button, play. Ready, press play. Play button saved. That's all there is to it, but I'll go into a little bit of an explanation of how this works. If all you care about is testing this out for yourself and you want to look at the code and figure it out by yourself, feel free to stop watching now. 
everything pretty much is happening in one group and I do have one optional group in the case that you have a remote with buttons that aren't in our payload XML. The learn button command where we tell it which button we want to learn infrared codes for is using a payload XML file that I'm including with the installation of Vox Commando and it's called payload all button names. In this payload, if I open it up and you look inside, you'll see that we have many common names that you would see on any kind of DVD or TV or Blu-ray player or uh, audio, stereo, volume up, whatnot. Now there may be some things that aren't here, some button names that aren't here, and you're going to want to learn codes for a button that isn't listed here. Well, then you have two options. One is to edit this to add in the, the buttons that are missing. Or if you find you have a lot of them and you don't want to do that, then you can use payload dictation. And one of the things that you can do in Vox Commando in a situation like this is you don't have to choose one method or the other, you can actually use both. So I've included here the exact same learn button command but this one uses the payload XML and it's in a group that has a higher priority. So if it can find a voice command with a payload that matches what it thinks you're saying, it'll use this one because it's in a higher priority group. But if it can't find anything close to what you're saying, then it'll kick back to the option of using the payload dictation. So you can actually learn a button for something crazy or just something that we missed. But for example, now I could do, you do have to enable this. And I'll check in my groups here that it's on. Learn button mountain. Ready, press mountain. Mountain button saved. Learn button power. Ready, press power. Power button saved. So if you look at the history window here, you'll see that when I said learn button mountain, well, it doesn't actually show us here, unfortunately. We can see that there are all, it's, it's looking Ready, at alternates press between power. learn button using the XML or learn button Ready, using press dictation. Power. Um, the most recent command it assumed that we meant learn button power based on the XML, payload XML Ready, file. Press power. And you'll see that both commands worked. If we look in the map editor under the DVD, we did manage to learn the mountain button. So that's your option. Now in terms of explaining how the code works and again this is optional if it works you don't need to worry about it but in case you're interested I will explain sort of um, the methodology and and you may also want to edit some of these commands for example the first command is the one where we tell it what device we want to program so you may want to add your own things here so you may want to be able to say I want to program uh, my Samsung I want to program my uh, air conditioner, etc. And it'll create map names based on this payload. And then when you tell it that you want to learn buttons, it'll store them in that the table with that map name. You can change the phrasing here if you want. Obviously, I want to learn program buttons. Here I wrote from my, I really should have one uh, for my. Right? I want to learn buttons for my air conditioner. And here's an optional, uh, I want to learn buttons for my TV remote. The actual command does the following. Now remember we have only one payload and it's the name of the device that we want to store codes for. First it stores a variable um, called learn map this variable is um, keeping track of which table we'll be updating. And I'm creating a table called UU underscore 
payload one. So it'll be uu underscore tv or it'll be uu underscore fan, etc. And I did that to differentiate codes that I'm learning with my USB UART from codes that uh, I learn on my global cache or on my Halex or by other methods. So once we've stored the name of the table that we're working with, we want to uh, use map.createTable. And if the table already exists, it won't do anything. It'll just uh, create it if it doesn't already exist. It won't overwrite an existing table or anything like that. Then we could give the user some feedback. And because my fan only generates short bursts of infrared, I check to see if we're learning codes from my fan. And if that's the case, I use this USB UART dot allow burst action. This puts USB UART into a special mode where it'll accept the first high quality signal that it sees instead of waiting for the code to be repeated several times and working its way up to a confidence of 100%. It'll just take the first burst, but it will look at the quality of that single burst. And if it's uh, high enough, it'll generate the learned event. So we have two possible events that can be generated when we learn a code. Uh, one is the uuirt.learn too short, and the other is the uuirt learn complete. I'll explain what learn too short is all about when we look at the next command. So after we've run this command, we have a created the map table and we've stored the name of the map that we want to be editing or adding to. Uh, we've alerted the user and we've also uh, set the burst mode depending on whether or not we're working with a device that requires short codes for learning. The next thing you want to do is tell it which button you want to program. So again, if you want, you can use an auxiliary command that uses payload dictation. And the macro of this command is identical to the macro of this command, or should be. So here we say learn button stop, for example. So the first thing we do here is we store this variable with the name of the button that we're going to be learning. And we'll be using this later along with the name of the device. We then tell the USB UUIRT to go into learn mode. So it's instead of generating events for every code that it sees, it's actually listening and waiting till it can learn a code. When it does, if the code is longer than 50 characters, it'll generate the learn complete event. If it's less than 50 characters, it will generate the learn to short command. So this is up to you. Uh, you may have some devices that actually generate some very short valid codes. In that case, you might need to reduce this number. Also note that if you're using learn, dot, um, learn pronto, pronto codes are much longer than the uh, learn UU codes. We tell the user that everything is groovy and remind them which button we've heard, just in case. And so now after executing this command, the USB UART is in learn mode and it's waiting for us to press the button. So when we press the button and the code is long enough, this event will be generated and we are triggering this command. So one of the things I do in this command is I check to make sure that we have variables. So this little bit of logic is checking to make sure that uh, both the learn map variable and the learn button variable actually have values stored in them. If it doesn't have a var dot in it, then that means that both of these variables have something stored in them, and we can go ahead and use those to update our map. So this is that single action that actually stores the value. The first parameter is the name of the map table that we want to use, and that's using the variable that we previously stored in the I want to program my blank command. The second is the name of the button, which we stored in the learn button variable. And the third is the value to put into the map table, and that is payload one, because the event learn complete has one payload, and that's the IR code. 
So all our work is done at this point. The rest is um, just telling the user that the code was stored correctly. And optionally, you can show them the code. And optionally, you can also store the code in a payload XML. But I'm actually going to take this out because um, it makes more sense to just use the map and then to export the payload XML when we're done. So um, that's it. I hope that you found this instructional. And uh, if you have any problems, you know where to find us. Thanks for watching.